wait for you. That's Bruno Mars right here on Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Uh, got a great show that was uh, basically uh, asked to asked of me by one of the comments, I believe is where I got this from. Uh, and it was a great idea, great request. So difference between patience and allowing. Big question uh, that the, you know, the uh, viewer had was, you know, is patience okay, first off, and then kind of explain the difference between it and allowing. What's going on when, when you're allowing versus when you're patient? So to cover the quick part, uh, the patience, in my mind, one, the word patience is not a bad word per se, especially when what you mean by it is eagerness, right? I'm, I'm eager, I'm excited, I'm looking forward to this, right? When you've got that level of attitude behind your patience, then yeah, patience is a perfectly good word. When your word patience is being used in lieu of or instead of impatience, inpa- impatience, I believe, yes, instead of that, then the word is not good. And really, what really matters in this entire aspect of what words we use is the energy behind them. So again, if my energy inside of me when I say patience is actually, yes, eager, woo, looking forward to it, it's great, this is coming, I'm, yes, right? This is right out here in front of me, I know what's happening, I'm excited, whenever it happens, it happens, right? That's kind of where the patience word comes in. But it's good, I love it, right? So it's that energy. When the energy is more of a, oh, it hasn't happened yet, or yay, I'm eager, or yay, I'm so excited. That level of energy difference is the problem. So again, when we're using the word patience because we're trying to mask over the fact that we're disappointed that things aren't happening yet, that's not good. And it's not bad because we're using the word patience, or it's not bad because we're using the word impatient. In fact, universe doesn't care what words you use. You could call it a turn up, and it doesn't matter so long as what you're referring to when you say turn up is, you know, getting together with your specific person. If it makes you happy when you say turn up, then cool. It's a great word. But when every time you say turn up, you feel bad, ah, it's a bad word. Shouldn't say turn up. So again, it comes down to the energy. What we feel, what we're vibrating, what we're energetically doing right now is what we attract. That is why the energy matters. That is also why it doesn't matter what words you use. The words don't matter. It's what the it's the way you feel when you're using the words or it's the way you feel prior to choosing the word that matters. That is what's attracting your outcome. That is what's attracting your reality. Regardless of what you're hoping to accomplish, what you're energetically sending out is what is energetically coming back. It's what you're attracting back towards you. And if what you're interested in experiencing is a different energetic vibration than where you're currently at, then you're not going to find it. It just won't, you won't match up. So again, does it matter if I use patience or not patience? Nah. Turn up or not turn up? Nah. If I'm saying and I'm excited and eager and I mean it and you can hear it in my voice, I'm excited. Wow, this is so awesome. This stuff is happening. I'm getting coincidences. I'm seeing signs. Do you hear the exact excitement in my voice? Yes. That is very powerful in the law of attraction and in manifesting. But when I'm like, ah, oh, man, it's just not like it's, I, I know I can do this. I know, I know I've got the ability to move forward. I mean, there's, there's no question in my mind that I deserve this. Like you can hear I'm saying the right words, but I'm not feeling it. So it doesn't matter what I'm saying. It matters that I'm, I'm defeated and I'm trying really hard to be positive. Again, affirmations, when we constantly say, are you doing affirmations? They're meant to make you feel better. That's the point of an affirmation, to spin ourselves around. I think someone recently brought up how another law of attraction thing is the pivot approach, right? If you're heading upstream and you need to change that, or if you're feeling bad and you need to change it, then think one thought that makes you feel a little bit better, then one thought that makes you feel a little bit better than that, then one thought that makes you feel a little bit better than that, and then one thought that makes you feel a little better than that. And when you're able to slowly shift yourself to a happier feeling place, you're actually going miles towards your manifestation and making what you want come true. So that's the deal with patience, not patience, whatever. It's the energy behind it that truly matters. Now, when it comes to allowing, 
Allowing is kind of a different thing. Allowing is very cool in my mind. So one thing I want to start off with when it comes to allowing is one of the major law of attraction concepts that really is super important to understand, to um, really appreciate, in my opinion, like really the second you can get to the point of appreciating it and you start to understand why it exists for us, then it starts to become a lot easier to deal with the repercussions of it, if you will. And so let me explain. What I'm talking about is contrast. Contrast is something that Esther Hicks talks about a great deal. Contrast is the things we don't want in life and the things we do want in life are contrasts of each other. So one of the wonderful things about this extremely abundant universe we live in, because everything is in abundance. It's either abundantly not giving you stuff or it's abundantly giving you stuff, but there is abundance about everywhere, right? So one of the really important things for us to appreciate is everything exists around us right now. Everything, all choices, all options, you with a girlfriend or boyfriend, you without, you in your specific person relationship, you not in your specific person relationship, and you in every varying stage of that. All of this exists around us simultaneously. The reason contrast is beautiful, one, that's part of why we live in this world where we've got all these options. We can experience anything we want. It's an issue of teaching us how to control our thoughts, our words, and our deeds, but certainly our energy. Trying to control ourselves is how we manifest things towards us. Remember, your energy that you're vibrating is what you're attracting towards you. Your imaginal work is the asking. So you're saying, universe, here's what I want. Cool. Now I feel really good about it. That's what I'm going to attract. If I say, hey, universe, this is what I want. Cool. I'm going to feel crappy about it the whole time. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So contrast is meant to kind of help us figure out what it is we'd like to happen, sometimes because we've experienced what we don't want to happen. So contrast is an extremely important thing. So eventually, we'll use the specific person as an example, and we'll use me even for, for an example. We'll keep it generic, of course. You, know, you guys know how I roll. But I've certainly had relationships in the past, a few of them, that weren't successful. At least, you know, we spent a few years together, whatever, ended up getting my heart ripped out of my chest, learned some valuable lessons, right? Things I do like, things I don't like, things I'm going to do again, things I will not do again. A lot of experiences that have helped me essentially shape the woman of my dreams. And how it kind of played out in my world is I finally kind of reached this place where I literally started writing down, here's the type of woman that I would like to experience. And I started listing off all these different traits. You know, she needs to be intelligent. She has to have a sense of humor. She has to be extremely kind. She has to have an amazing large heart. She has to be a giving, caring, loving person. You know, all these things, right, have to happen, right? And so I, I start kind of building this person. And then lo and behold, that's what I draw into my life. I meet this individual in a great odd kind of circumstance that was truly amazing. And it was truly one of those, like, as soon as we looked in each other's eyes, we knew. So at that point, contrast had brought me to a choice. Now I have a choice. What do I want to do? Do I want to be with this woman that I care about? Or do I want to choose a different path? And what allowing is, is me saying, okay, that's the choice I'm going to choose. Now I'm going to let it happen. I'm going to allow this to occur. That is what allowing is for. Now, when we start questioning every step of the way, or we step a few steps towards it, and then they don't text us back quick enough, and then we start questioning everything. Oh, I don't know if I want to do this. This isn't worth it. It's not working. Now you're not allowing. Kind of why I think a lot of times, too, we talk about the letting go concept. Again, it's just ways, like different tips or tricks that can get us to the allowing place and stop second guessing ourselves every step of the way. Again, when you make a choice and then allow it to happen, that's allowing. You've made a choice, you're sticking with it, I'm behind my choice 100% and I know what's going to happen because I know this works and I'm keeping my energy groovy so I know that's what I'm attracting. But a lot of us make a choice, take a couple steps get frustrated, take a couple steps back, throw our hands up and say, oh, I don't like this. This isn't working. And that's not 
One, that's not allowing. Two, we're screwing our energy up, so we're not helping manifest. And three, we're kind of all over the place. And I get that a lot of us want this immediately. And I, I honestly don't have a good answer for time frames. I'm Seriously, this is something that I'd like to come up with some really cool little fun, great little tip or trick or tool that'll help all of us. But right now I don't. It's going to take as long as it takes. And that's just part of the journey. That's part of the allowing. That's part of this process. And really, when you start to get behind it, that these are just choices, that these are just things that we're, we're experiencing and we're going through, and it's meant to kind of strengthen our, our choices, right? And getting behind them. It's meant to strengthen our conviction. It's meant to strengthen this concept that we realize that what we think, say, and do actually affects what we experience tomorrow or a week from now. It also helps us keep our energy in line in light of the fact that we're sometimes going to have moments where ugly things happen in life. We're going to sometimes have moments where certain people might react to us in a way that's very strange and might kind of kick us sideways, as I've said, or jack up our energy or screw up the way we're feeling. We need to learn how to be able to hop back in to our regular feeling self, to be able to kind of redirect ourselves intentionally down to a place where we feel better. Again, this is why we talk about affirmations all the time. Affirmations are not the words. You can say, I feel better. I am a good person. I am attractive. I am uh, strong. I am... right." Okay, that doesn't do anything for you. If it's more of a, I'm beating myself up and then I'm like, okay, I am a good person. I really am. You know, I'm trying really hard to get things going in the right direction. I know I'm being kind to this person. I know I love her with all my heart. And I know that these things are going to start to work out. I know they are. I can feel it in my bones. Like right now, me just saying I'm getting chills in my back because it feels good what I'm saying. That coupled with allowing the situation to happen and unfold and create itself before us is the trick and is the key to this whole thing. Now, one thing that kind of kind of dawned on me recently, and I was almost going to do a separate show on this, but I almost think it's probably better just to dovetail this in at the very end of this of this particular show. There's been a lot of times, sorry, I thought the camera turned off. <laughs> There's been a lot of times in my life where I've kind of looked back, and this for me recently especially, and I looked back and I saw all these little coincidences, call them what you want, but all these little signs that have been happening, that have been indicators that things are moving in the right direction. And every time I kind of take a step in one direction and things start to happen, I'm like, all right, this is totally working. And what dawned on me is, wow, these all these little coincidences that you have going on are basically the universe showing you that things are happening perfectly. I mean, my timing with traffic signal, just so many things. There's so many wonderful things to help to me indicate that, yeah, you're on the right track. This is happening. You're getting there. Your timing is perfect. Here's some coincidences to make you realize that, yeah, that's exactly what you're trying to manifest and create. And then I started to realize, well, shoot, I am doing exactly what I should be doing. All these things are indicating it. I'm totally on the path. I am definitely heading in the direction I'm heading. It's kind of like if you're in a river, right? And you're rafting on a river and you're kind of moving down and bumping around, right? I'm just rapids and you got your little, you know, your little paddle out in the water, right? You don't question that you're on the river. You know you're on the river. So when you've got these coincidences happening in your life, you're on the river. It's showing you you're on the river. You're heading in that direction. So what? They don't text you right back. A lot of times that's our egos trying to elicit a response from them that isn't ready to happen yet. Stop trying to force things and look at what is showing itself that is cool. A lot of us make the mistake of trying to force something for our egos, something for our conscious self so we can go, see, it is happening. But when it doesn't happen, we get uh, flustered and we stop thinking about all the great things that are happening, we screw up our energy, then we don't see as many coincidences, now we're not on the river anymore. But when we allow it, when we are feeling it, when we're seeing the positives that are happening, we're back on the river, right? We're back, right? We're back on the river. 
And when you can finally get back on the river and you start feeling good again and you start realizing, oh my gosh, this is totally happening, then you start to kind of almost create more energy towards it. And you start to even attract it even faster. It's one of those things where the better you feel and the better you feel and the better you feel, the quicker and quicker and quicker it comes. That's why it's so hard to pin down a time on it because it depends on you. It depends on your efforts, on your feeling, on how honest you're actually being with yourself, on how well you actually are trying to understand these principles that we're sharing with you. All these things come into play. And doubt and bad feelings and constantly questioning our path or not allowing definitely slows us down. Definitely, definitely slows us down. Can you manifest anything you want? I believe you can, and I'm definitely going to say that. Are there exceptions? Yeah, I don't think anything's black and white. I'll be totally honest with you. I think there are gray areas. There has definitely been, I was just sharing it with someone today. There was a time where I was going for, it was about a year ago. I was up for two different jobs, right? The place where I'm currently at, which is a call center. I log into a phone. I was like, "Ah, I just don't really want to be on a, I don't want to be logged into a phone helping people. Like that was the only real thing. So I reached out to my old company, prior to the one I was working at last, right? So it was like two companies ago. So I reached out to them and they basically needed some help. And I'd talked to a couple of people I used to work with over there. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I still know the back end. I still know the system. And it would have been a bit, bit of chance to sort of do a little bit cooler stuff than I was doing when I was there, but still basically doing the same stuff. But I basically told them a, a pretty insane amount of money. And they're like, all right, this is cool. And so I was pushing down that path. And the main reason I was doing it was one, the money, and two, because I wanted to uh, I wanted to not have to log into a phone. Long story short, they didn't take me. They didn't want to for whatever reason. They didn't give me a reason. I, I think I, I think there's some reasons. I mean, I ended up quitting there. Um, and so I don't know. I, and I also don't think they liked the fact that I kind of was holding them over a barrel, basically, because I was the only person at all that actually knew the back end of their systems. Everyone else that was there didn't. And the only people they had were like in New Zealand, which is the only other place where where they actually had that level of expertise. So they didn't take it. And it's like, all right, well, fine. I ended up taking the job where I work now, which was still a pay increase from where I was working. But I was like, all right, I got to log into a phone. Well, long story short, and the good news of it, I log into a phone. I'm a salaried position, but I log into a phone and I log in for eight hours. Pretty much once my eight-hour shift is up, we log out, we go home. So I work a shorter shift, I have more free time, and because of this new job, it's allowed me to actually push forward with YouTube, which is something I very much wanted to do. So sometimes what we want isn't necessarily what's best for us in the big picture. And I had placed out a lot of things that I wanted to see happen in my life, and the job was certainly part of it. This relationship is certainly part. Like there's a big slew of things. YouTube certainly part of it. All this stuff comes together as this big grandiose plan that I've got for my life. Well, I was pushing really hard for a job that didn't fit into that. As much as I wanted it and liked it, in fact, when I went to the interview, it felt like that's where I was going back to work. It was a trip. I'm like, I got this. This is a done deal. And I was shocked. In fact, I was bummed after when I didn't get it. And it was one of those things where I kind of walked forward in hindsight and said, I got what was best for me. I got what I wanted, not what I was asking for. So it's kind of interesting how these things happen. So I allowed my possibility to show up. I allowed the success that I was trying to manifest create itself, which because of that, I was now able to do things that I would not have been able to do had I gone back to my other job. So again, a lot of times things work out perfect and it's starting to see the perfection in what's happening. And I'm not saying if you're having a hard time with your specific person that that means they're not the right one. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that if you've made claims about what you would like your life to be, and on top of that, you've got a specific person in mind, who knows? And there are options where that gets into the gray area. So a lot of these things really depend. It's kind of like if you're at a place where you're trying to create a better life for yourself, allow that to show itself and kind of let it fill in some of the blanks, even the ones that you're trying to be specific about. Because sometimes there's maybe a better choice for you, even than the one that you're thinking is the best choice for you. So again, allow it to show itself to you 
rather than being so focused on what it's supposed to be and then getting disappointed because that's not what happened. I hope that makes sense. Um, so anyway, we're going to go from there. Uh, I'm going to try to get out of this. I think uh, I'm so confused. I'm looking at the timer on the camera and it switched and I had to start filming over in the middle of this. So anyway, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I don't know. Anywho, uh, great song we're going to be going out with by Guns N' Roses. The song's called Patience. It's right here. Dan Radio style. She said, woman, take it slow. It'll work itself out fine. All we need is just a little patience. Said, sugar, make it slow. And we'll come together fine. 